swamps of southern Louisiana, alligator hunting is a way of life that dates back centuries. Today, in order to manage the exploding gator population, hunters continue to do battle with one of the world's deadliest creatures. Get it, David! When you're fishing out again, you're dealing with an animal that can eat you. Oh! And wants to eat you. Swampers capture thousands of menacing alligators every season, but there are only a few that stand out from the pack. This ain't no baby. And become legend. This was a massive alligator. This big, massive trophy gator. It only comes by once in 50 years. Ah! What happened? That fight. I'm going to bring that to my grave with me. It's not just the size of the gator, it's their smarts, stealth, and sheer violence that make them rise above the rest. Not only in the memory of swampers, but in the lore of the bayou. I hope I'm 91 years old still gator fishing. I'm gonna be fighting till the end. Ooh, ooh. Shoot him. Welcome. Oh my God. To Swamp People's 10 Deadliest Hunts. Number 10 came four years ago in Pierre Park. King of the Swamp, Troy Landry, and his son, Jacob, only had two days left in their season to catch a rogue beast that was attacking gators on their lines. We know he's here. Down there. The monster was the granddaddy of all cannibal gators and could have wiped out the future population in his area. Over the years, it had earned a worthy nickname. When I first seen it, I thought it was the Loch Ness Monster. I heard stories about a big, big one around here. The Loch Ness Monster was a real big alligator. He might have been 100 years old. He kept terrorizing our lines. He would kept eating our gators off of our lines, and we had to catch him. He was costing me a lot of money. Troy knew he couldn't wait another year. It was now or never. They thought they were in luck. Oh, look at the size of that thing, Jacob. Looks like we got a big one. But as they got closer, the giant was gone. That's not the one I saw. No, that's not the one we saw. Damn. Leaving a small gator hooked on their line. Remember what I told you? When you catch one, it draws the attention of another one. We just drove up, got about a five foot on our line. And they had about a 12 or 13 footer right here with it, fixing to eat it. Oh, look, look, look. It was a sure sign of a savage cannibal gator. He's eating half. A gator like the likeness, he attacks that gator to take his food. The next morning, Troy reinforced his hunting team, bringing his regular deckhand Clint and Jacob back to the scene of the crime. This is where we saw the Loch Ness yesterday. This is this one. It was the last day of the season, and Troy was a man on a mission. I don't know if we're getting hold of him on that. That big? Oh, he's got my big, bro. Then, on his last line, he had something out of the ordinary. We're on top of it. So just laying on the bottom right there. Boy, he does not want to come He's up. He's under the boat. He's stuck. Uh-uh. He don't want to come up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The lock net. What the shit? The 850-pound monster was finally hooked, and it was going to be a fight to the finish. It was unbelievable how strong this gator was. 
He was trying to pull me in the body is what he was trying to do. Hey, we need help over here. I was definitely holding on for my life right there with that big thing. Shoot him again. Clint couldn't get a clean shot. And the Loch Ness Monster went into a death roll. You just don't know what an animal like that's capable of doing. Finally, the beast revealed itself, and Clint took aim. Hey, hey, hey we got him, that son of a bitch. Woo! We're gonna do the alligator shuffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the alligator shuffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the buyer. You got it, Jake? See. That's big, huh, brother? Man, we got a 13 footer today. You know, out of all the alligators I've caught in my life, very few of them stand out that I remember. And he was one of them that I remember real well. Capturing Loch Ness was not only memorable. He's huge. Huge, huge. But the record-setting gator confirmed that Troy Landry was still the king of the swamp. He is the top alligator hunter in America. The canals of Bayou Soil is where number nine took place. Four years ago, on the first day of gator season, Junior Edwards and his sons, Willie and Randy, spotted a monster. That's him going up the bow right there. I got him on my point right there. And they decided to go after it. Get ready to throw the hook on him, catch him. They made a risky move trying to hook the gator in open water, a skill the Edwards family's known for. Throw it way up there and let it drift down. But back then, Willie was just learning to throw the treble hook. Quit choking that rope. Throw it across him now. Huh. Well, it, the gator's right there, son. You got to throw it out over there. You, you way off of him. That gator's going out in deep water. He ain't standing by this bank now. You get a big, big old alligator, and once you get a fool with him a couple times and it scared him a couple times, it's nine times of 10, you ain't going to get another chance on him. Willie's throws were way off the mark, and the beast was getting away. Throw it, throw it up yonder, up yonder. Oh, damn. You yeah. up now. It's too big a gator. I'll be screwing up on Stirred into a rage by Willie, the gator turned and came straight back for the boat. See him out there? Oh, he's right there, Willie. He's passing right there. There he is, right there, right there. Give Willie had it, and the battle was on. When you set that hook on him, you better be ready for the fight, because he's going to fight. Good job, Willie. Don't let him roll up in there with your hands. Yeah. He'll pull the rope so fast through your fingers that he take chunks of meat out of your fingers. Get that other hook. Coming underneath the boat. Let him roll on up there. Let him roll up. Close to 12 we, foot out. We need, a, we need another hook on him. The beast rammed the boat. <laughs> and Junior knew by the sheer force of its blow, this giant would snap their line unless they doubled down. We knew we had to have backup, so we brought two treble hooks. We had to have two hooks on him to get him in the boat. With a second hook set, Junior took aim. This ain't no baby. He grabbed my boat. I was just thrilled to death once we got him in the boat. We knew the fight was over with. That's a big animal. He gave us a workout, that one. <laughs> in Pecan Island, Gator Queen Liz Cavalier and her daughter Jessica. This is our old territory here. Were after an elusive old gator that had given the slip to her family for two generations, and it's number eight on our list. It first started off with my father trying to catch this big alligator. And he always told me, I hope one day you can go back there in the marsh and get that big alligator. So he was a legend to him, and he became a legend to me. That morning, as they set their lines and moved farther into the marsh, Mother Nature threw them a curveball. Liz decided they had time to check one more line before running for cover. That's a good sign. The pole's 
moving. The line was down, and they had something stubborn hooked. Ooh, and he's tight. That's gonna be our big boy, yes it'll. He pulls, yes. He let that line go. Come here, you big papa. He's holding on to that bottom for dear life. Pressured by the storm, Liz was growing impatient, but she had no idea what was lurking beneath them. Oh! You saw him? Woo! It was the moment Liz had been looking forward to since she was a little girl. You have no idea what we're dealing with here. Liz knew that if this 900-pound monster put up a fight, she and her daughter would be overpowered. Oh, Mom, I gotta tell you. You better have your big girl draws on. I'm ready. We didn't have much time to, to mess with him and fight with him, but there was no way that we was gonna let that monster gator go. We was gonna get him. I gotta catch my breath for this. It's not a big... Baby, I know. Get that freaking gun ready. She had to ease the behemoth to the surface and pray that Jessica was on the mark. I'm taking the first shot. He's done, baby. He's done. Oh, man. So here we go. Jessica made a perfect kill shot, but now the girls had a nearly impossible task on their hands. Let me just push, pull him back here first. That's a monster. Getting almost a half a ton of dead weight into the boat. It wasn't until I pulled his head all the way out the water and I seen, wow, this is the big one. All right, go. Hold on, and hey, Mama get a grip. No! no! What happened? He still wasn't done. That big bass is coming in a boat. I don't care what it takes. Desperate, Liz tried to come along chain she had in her toolbox. All right, Jess. You want to come work this? OK, Jess, I want you to tighten up the come along right now. OK. There you go. We cranked the come along all the way up and it, it wouldn't go no more. So I thought for a second, what what we gonna do if we can't get him in? I want him to swing. There yeah, you go, boy. On. He wants to go the opposite direction. We tried to pull him over and he'd always fight against us. It was gonna take pure brute force. And Jessica reached down deep and found the strength. Hold on, I'm gonna come Come on, you. baby doll. Jessica was like strong. She she kept on going. Jessica gave it all she had. He's coming in, Shad. Watch your legs. Just watch your legs. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Oh. Woo! That was worth it. It was like a blessing. I sat down in the bow and said, Woo! It was like, it took everything out of me, but it was all worth it. The monster of Monster Marsh was one of the largest gators caught that season. That's amazing. You know, men that brag, oh, they're just women, you know, they can't handle that. They have trouble pulling them in the boat. Come watch us women, we did it. <laughs> That's what you call the victory <laughs> one. Over in Homa, R.J. Molinaire and his son, Jay Paul, were on a mission to track down a monster that had been threatening swamp residents for years. Let's go get this bad boy, man. And it's our seventh deadliest hunt. A gator that's gonna sit, eat other alligators or uh, take out deer and kill his females, it's not something you wanna have around. It's a destroyer. He's out here. This might be part too luck. Its unusual behavior had earned this beast its own name. Patula is a French word for you're not all there. You know, you're a wacko. Anything that comes around him and he feels like killing it, he just destroys it. It was a big, nasty, brutal gator. It was only going to be a matter of time before Patula made one of the locals its next meal. He just wanted to destroy everything. He needed to be removed. RJ and J. Paul found grisly evidence that the enemy was in their area. Look at this. 
This is crazy. She just pulled the head clean off of the neck. Ate the head off. Tore the head clean just off. Just ate the head off. Something Patula would do. There's, there is a beast in here. We had some young seven, eight foot alligators on the line. He would just tear parts off of them. He'd just smash them like pancakes. He was just a, a bully. As they moved farther into the swamp, they discovered more clues that they were in Pa Tu La's path of destruction. Oh, big right here, huh? That looked like something that like Pa Tu La would do. Look how wide. Right here, bro. This monster was so elusive, the Molinaires knew they'd have to go above and beyond their usual baiting techniques. Pa Tu La was one special gator. So for me to catch that alligator, I had to think like him. We're going to outsmart this guy. We're going to bait him in a different way, and Patula's going to mess up. I'm just going to throw it right where he gets up at. Breakfast in bed, bro. Instead of hanging the bait over the water, they placed the rancid beef melt right in the gator's lair. If this don't get him, Jay, ain't nothing going to get him, bro. Patula, you ain't in trouble, bro. We coming for you, big boy. RJ and Jay Paul waited several hours to circle back giving Pa Tu La time to take the bait. And when they returned, they finally spotted the bully gator. Hey, bro, we got, we got us a piece. Come on, man. Oh, that's Pa Tu La right you there. Think? That's a bad boy right there, bro. Don't spook, don't walk, walk slow, dude. Go! That's Pa Tu La, dude. Dude, he's at least 12. In order to bag the beast, RJ and J. Paul had to make a risky move and finish it on foot. Get ready, get ready. Watch my back. On land, we've got a chance of losing them. Look at son of a bitch now. Oh, bro, we lost them. Let's go get them. <laughs> Knowing this alligator's not on the lawn, it's in open water. It takes the stakes up a little higher. In open water, uh, a lot of things can go wrong. The boys had to work fast to get a shot on this gator before they lost it under the murky water for good. But before the Molinaires could find it, what in the world? It found them and rammed the bottom of their boat. On top of them. And he circled back. He tackled the boat. He would bang on our boat a little bit and we'd stop. He would disappear. And all of a sudden, the boat would start moving again and start going crazy. And finally, it's starting to come straight for the boat, like he was going to ram our boat. Watch yourself, watch yourself. He's right here. He's right here somewhere. J. Paul struggled to get a shot off before the crazed gator could capsize their boat. Right there, right there, right there. Awesome. Good job, babe. It's a big boy. In her pound solid muscle. That's all muscle, bro. Nothing feels better than to catch a gator like Patula. It made me feel that I did my job. With the years, the time I spent on the water, it paid off. Number six happened 64 miles to the north, up in Hammond. Legendary hunter Bruce Mitchell and his trusty dog Tyler were running lines early in the morning. Come on, Tyler, we got a lot of work to do. For years, Bruce hunted alone, so he's always armed to the teeth and prepared for a fight. It's dangerous out here. You're out here on your own, you're in the wide open. You gotta be tough. You don't have nobody to rely on when you hunt by yourself. Oh. Hunting solo is risky. And when Bruce has an extra big gator on his line, he's always on high alert. I think I got a big one over here. Oh yeah, we got a nice one here. Oh yeah. This behemoth was more than Bruce had bargained for. And in the heat of the battle, he lost his footing. Ah, and ended up right on top of the angry killer. When that gator jerked me out and I went on top of him, there was a stump underneath me that rotted out. When my legs went in between the roots and the gator was between my legs. Oh, get back. Bruce was worried that Tyler would jump in the water to save him. He needed to end this fight fast. I got my little just in case gun. And, uh, I've always carried it with me. It's a little small pistol, but it packs a wallet. That's good. It's pulled me out a lot of jams. I mean, a lot of them. 
with a big gator like that, one flick of the tail, and he's got you pushed over, and you know, you, you his dinner. Just got lucky. I was able to bend my legs and actually lock the gator down and take my shot. Bruce nearly lost his life that day. But with some quick thinking and his just-in-case gun, that's how fast he went on to hunt another day. Well, in this situation, you, you know, you dealt a hand. You got to look at your cards and play them real fast. And apparently, I made the right choice. I think the good Lord was watching out for me that day. Number five on our list was in Pierre Park. Living in the swamp with man-eating gators all around requires a watchful eye. Troy and his sons Jacob and Chase were in search of a massive gator that was trespassing on their property. We had a big alligator giving us problems right in my backyard. He's eating our ducks, and you know, you were just terrorizing my, my property, my home. The fun's about to begin. Their usual outboard couldn't get into the shallow swamp, so they had to go after this monster in an unstable pirogue. What we got, boys? Troy set out lines the night before, right where they believed the gator would be lurking. Look like we got something bundled up, huh? Lord have mercy, what we got here? What we got? I think it's dead. It's dead, Jake? It, yeah, it looked like it's dead. Watch him, Jacob. The gator went from playing possum to alive and deadly. Hurry up, Jacob, before he pop that line. He's gonna pop that line and get up there and shoot him. Uh, not like that. Whoa. Whoa. You might have to get on the bank, Jacob. He's coming in the water. Get the gun. Oh, watch him. Jacob. Oh, he's under the Oh, don't let him flip us. Don't let him flip us over. And you're trying to catch maybe a 13-foot alligator in an 11-foot P-roll. That don't really work too well. The monster was even bigger than Troy expected. And when it tried to turn the P-roll over, the boys were sitting ducks. Oh, my God! Shoot him! Shoot him, dig him! He's on the bottom. He's gonna flip it, I'm telling you. Oh! You got it. Don't let him flip us. Oh my God! And he's lifting up the P-roll. Oh! Ah! Shoot him, Jacob! What you waiting on? Shoot him! Shoot him, Jacob! Oh my God! We was put in a scary situation that we didn't expect to be put into it. It took us by surprise. This thing is big. Can you believe that right behind the house? He actually tried to flip the P-Roll, and when I got the P-Roll away from him, he launched out the water and tried to bite one of my boys. He was mean like hell. One, two, three. No. This hunt was personal, and the Landry's home was safe once again. <sighs> For now. Over in Bayou Sorrel, with number four, it wasn't the size of the gator that made the hunt deadly. It was the journey to find it. And no one is more willing to go the distance than Willie and Randy Edwards. Last year, they took a big risk venturing into hostile and inaccessible territory to a place they called Gator Heaven. Going into Gate of Heaven, we knew it was going to be tough. When you back off in there, I mean, Gate of Heaven, you talking about like three miles back off in the woods, pure swamp. We knew they had big gators, and it ain't been fished in like 30 or 40 years. Don't know what you're getting yourself into. The ride was treacherous. Oh. But they weren't after just alligators. Oh. Oh. They were after monsters. To get back there, it, it was rough. Even a shallow drainage ditch wasn't going to stop them. So the brothers built a dike to
to get their boat on the move again. Water come up about two foot. Yeah, it done jumped up there. Oh yeah, the boat floating good now. The trek to Gator Heaven was relentless. Oh, and it went by the chainsaw, so cut her up. When you stir up things deep in the swamp, you're likely to find some lethal critters waiting on you. That's a deadly one. That thing there kill you. If he hits you back here, you won't have time enough to make it out of here. That thing is deadly. They're in such a remote spot that for the Edwards boys, it was kill or be killed. When you're in that swamp, there's so much stuff out there that can take your life. It's just unbelievable, and you just got to stay on top of your game. About to break out here, Will. After hours of hacking through brutal terrain, Willie and Randy reached the untouched swamp. Look at that thing. And it was everything they hoped for. That's a big old gator right there. They swimming all over here. They got alligators everywhere. It didn't take long for a huge beast to hit one of their lines. Oh, we got him, we got him, Randy, we got him. Get your big gun. That's the big sway head, that's the sway head. That's a big one. Let's see what we got here on in this line. Watch your hands down there, brother. That thing big. He take off arm and all. Back right there. Got a dinosaur, man, dinosaur. But this giant, who hadn't seen a human in decades, was ready to brawl. Get your head up here, right? He was snapping at the boat, biting the side of the boat. And we're biting me. He fought. Wasn't no if, ands, buts about it. Ready, ready, go ahead. Oh, oh. We got a monster. That thing got a head on him. Good God. They reeled in five more monsters that day. Proving that sometimes a swamper's got to go through hell. We got Godzilla. Bigger than the boat. To get their gators. Oh, we got a 13 foot. Oh, what a gator. That's what we were looking for. I tell you, this is alligator heaven. Unlike their southern counterparts, David Ladart and his stepson Jeremy Pruitt hunt the swamps of northern Louisiana. Yeah, here we go. They're known in this region as the best alligator men around. While filling their tags last year, they spent their entire season obsessed with catching one legendary monster known as the Beast of the East. Hunting the Beast of the East, that was a real challenge. And this hadn't been my first run in with the Beast. I've been after him for years. I really want that big one. Maybe this year will be the year. I heard about this beast when I was around eight, so it's basically like I've been waiting to catch this alligator for 20 years, too. The swampers from Marion were consumed with thoughts of the beast. And finally, I seen him. What is that, Dave? Coming through the lily pads right there. There he is oh, right there. Oh, boy, look that at That is him. him right there. But in the excitement, David couldn't wait. He wanted to end the fight in a hurry. Get him, David! Can you get him? Damn! Went under. David misses. Once I seen him, it pumped me up so bad, he's all I wanted. Determined to lure it in, they broke out every weapon in their arsenal. I'd take a leak on a beehive if I knew it'd catch the beast of east today. David and I pulled out all the strings. We used our wahitas, monkey milk. We used the gator call. We pulled everything we had out. But their most clever invention was yet to come. Something they've never tried before. Female gator urine on cotton balls. <laughs> That's gonna do the trick. You gonna smell it? No. 
Last year, we got the urine out of that gator and put it up in them trees and got that scent everywhere. And that scent is what draws them in. With every trick in their book hanging in the trees, Jeremy and David's hopes were high. Man, I know he's on there. The swing out a little wide. Let me get this pole in case he tries to jump in the boat. All right. Oh, yeah. He's a monster. Finally, they hooked the massive gator that had escaped them for decades. That's the one we're looking for, Dave. Right there. Pull up on that line. It about yanks me out of the boat. Then all of a sudden, when he comes top of that water, it was just wide open. That alligator is so strong. I mean, it's like a chihuahua fighting a grizzly bear. Don't go in. If I'd have fell in that water right then, he would have came and just tore me apart. All right, slap that there, Dave. Come on. Slap that there. There he is, Dave. Are you loaded? Go ahead. Let that hammer fly. At last, the monster began to tire, and Jeremy positioned it for the kill shot. Come on. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Woo! Yeah, yeah. That's a nice damn alligator. 20 years in the making, the boys from Marion had the most prized alligator in the Northern Territory. That's huge, man. That's him, man. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus, for letting us catch this big alligator. Woo! Oh, look at the size look at of that Look head on that gator. He's just a beast, man. Bam, you finally win. There you go. I caught the beast of these. Let's go show him off, buddy. <laughs> a lot of people can only dream it. And we did it. <laughs> Number two on the list happened three years ago on the boundary line of Troy Landry's and Junior Edwards hunting grounds when a shrewd old gator pitted the two seasoned hunters against each other. On the last day of gator season, Troy, his then deckhand Liz, and son Jacob were on the hunt for this monster gator. I'm gonna tell y'all something, boys and girls, they got a big one back here. The legendary beast was so terrifying, <laughs> it had earned a nickname, the Rougarou, after a mythical Cajun werewolf-like devil. But Troy wasn't the only one after the Rougarou. Like Troy, Junior had been hunting the Rougarou for years. I see a Rougarou, I want to catch him. I'll chase him down. If he's on my land, I want him. Junior knew this gator would be up to its old tricks, trying to evade him again this season. Well, it's the river. The river, we fish. One side of it, they got it. The right side, I got it. And, and Rougarou just swim from side to side. The Rougarou was so smart, it seemingly figured out where Troy and Junior's property line was. Junior and I wouldn't always fish the Rougarou at the same time. When Junior would put a little pressure on him, he'd move to my side of the line. When I'd put pressure on him, he'd move to Junior's side. And he knows we're there, he hears us, he sees us. So he'll move. He'd go back and forth. We're gonna catch him. Putting rivalries aside, a plan was devised to catch the crafty gator. What Junior and I did was we decided that year we were both gonna fish at the same time. So now, even though both territories were covered, time was running out. Jacob, put your line right in them treetops right there somewhere. With only one day left in the season to catch the Rougarou, both swampers had to pull out all the stops. But well, he used to have some monsters stay right here. Are they here? It's gonna be finished today. Sometimes that little bit of extra you do is what makes the difference between success and failure. But the Rougarou continued to outsmart them both. Oh, he was very smart, and he knew it's like he knew what he was doing. That gator was playing both of us. As the day came to a close. We got Liz, we got chunk. Looks like it. There were signs they might have the Rougarou. Yeah, I think they got a real big one here. He broke the whole tree branch. Takes a hell of an alligator to break them poles like that. 
Yes, it's the big one. It's the one we've been looking for all day. As Troy pulled up the line, across the bayou, right there. Willie spotted a massive beast submerged in the open water. He's over there, right over there. That's him. <laughs> and from the size of the bubbles, Junior was sure this was the Rougarou. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's going over yonder. Get ready, get ready. He's coming up. that this gator was not the legendary Rougarou he was after. I was kind of upset. There wasn't nothing I could do about it then. It was over with. I was happy somebody caught him, but of course, Troy Landry had to catch him, you know? I mean, they just had to stick it out there, and he had to catch the dog the whole thing. Woo, look at that dang leg! The Landry boys and Liz couldn't have been happier. <laughs> Catching the Rougarou on their very last tag of the season. Rougarou ain't no baby, let me tell you something. Never thought we'd have caught this today over here. The hunter finally outsmarted the wily old gator. And in the end, Troy had earned some valuable bragging rights with Junior. Oh my God, if Junior would have caught the Rougarou, I'd still be hearing that till today. Done. That's all I would have heard. Oh, I caught the big one. I explore why he didn't catch it. Alligator shuffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alligator shuffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The season is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In Homa, the most deadly gator catch of all time took place just last year. R.J. Molinaire and his son, Jay Paul, were feeling the pressure to start off their gator season strong. It had been several years since they had hunted in Holman territory, and the boys wanted to make their community proud. We're back on our homeland, and we got to show we're the right people to take care of this land and we're the right people for the job. Whoa, here we go, here we go, here we go. While running their lines, they spotted a huge gator swimming in open water and Jay Paul was hell-bent on bringing it in. Hold on, Jay, hold on, hold on, hold on. He skimmed the top of it, and he knocked it out. But the tail kept moving every once in a while. Now it was a race against time to get to the gator before it sank. Hold on. Grab the, go over there, go over there. Just hold, hold, hold right there, hold right there. Hang on, Jay. I got it done. Hang on, Jay. Get the, get the gun ready. Get the, get the gun ready. The gator would disappear before Jay Paul could get a shot. He'll need the boat. I was always taught in our background, you know, when you shoot something or you um, injure an animal, you make sure you take care of business. You draw blood, you take care of business. In the heat of the moment, Jay Paul made a dangerous move. What is that? You see him? You feel him? Look at right there, that's you. Look at right there, that's you. Look there, right there. Grab that song, bitch. Hold on, sir. Hold on. Pull. Now it was up to Jay Paul to subdue the 650 pound beast all by himself. Hold on, right here. Hold on, right here. I put my legs in the mud and held my base so I had, I had strength. And when I pulled him, I put him on his back, he had no leverage to fight me. 
Give me some. Give me some. Give me some. Give me some. He could have made a rag doll out of J-Paul. When he Jay had him in the chokehold, he would have killed Jay against the boat by flipping him. Tie that motherfucker on his waist, Paul. The gator was regaining its strength by the minute. And Jay Paul was worried about the beast getting caught in his shirt. Just one spin, and he would have got free and wrapped me up. And he could have pulled me straight to that, that deep water and tore me to pieces and killed me. He would have never found me. I was out the room. But suddenly, the gator fought its way out of Jay Paul's grip. Rapid, rapid, rapid. Just started snapping at Jay Paul. RJ had to give his son a chance to get back in the boat. Okay, I'm getting ready to spin. Watch him. You gotta be on your P's and Q's always. All right, now he's done. Grab a rope. Grab a rope. Thank you, Lord. That was crazy. When he jumped in the water, you know, I'm like, oh my God, this is the only son I have. This is a big gator. I didn't know how big he was. I knew he was big. And I said, he could kill my son. He get off the freaking line. But we got him anyway. Who that son of a gun could kill? Take your break now. I'm good, bro. I'm ready to put him in the boat. <laughs> Let me get his head. Let me get his head. Let me get his head. This is definitely a memory I might have for the rest of my life. Ready? Go. Believe it or not, I can't say I wouldn't do it again because if the time comes and that time I have to do it, I'll, I'll jump, I'll do it again probably. Okay, roll, roll, okay, pull that way. As a father, being Native American, that, that moment that I watched my son become a man and become a warrior, that, I'm gonna bring that to my grave. He's in. Every alligator season brings new threats on the swamp, and hunters are always ready for battle. This is a clash that's been raging for generations, and neither side's giving up anytime soon. <laughs>